It's 3.45 in the morning. Just now getting to the airport. I haven't been asleep yet. One of the benefits of um, getting a flight this early, I got a five something like 5.45 a.m. flight, in which you don't even board until like 4.45 or some crap like that. Because at the airport is completely empty because it's one of the first flights out. And that means that it's really light security, uh, especially for international travel, even though I got a layover in Atlanta just for a, a hour and some change. But um, I got some work that I got to get done because uh, I was checking up and seeing what was happening over at Fight Club because I love Fight Club. And you know what we do on Fight Club. And the first rule of Fight Club is you don't really talk about Fight Club. So I'm actually breaking the first rule right now. However, um, yeah, we got that international travel. So uh, I got an hour now and then I got a couple hours on the plane in order to get the rest of my work done. And then we fly over to the Dominican Republic, Santo Domingo, and uh, I can get the rest of the work that I need to get done uh, for Sunday and Monday. And that way I'll have the rest of the weekend in order to just be able to chill and have a good time. So uh, while Rita and Leslie is over there playing with augmented reality, uh, I'll lock down, take care of some business, and get the rest of this work done so that I can get it popping. Chilling. Feel super comfortable. This ain't nowhere or no different than any other place. It's just cultural. I think the uh, biggest thing for me is that now I feel more incentivized to actually learn a different language. Got trash all over the street. But I feel more incentivized to learn a different language now because uh, I think as you travel, it becomes a little bit more beneficial. It becomes a lot more beneficial as you travel. But it's a lot of people out all the time. It's a lot of traffic all the time. It's a lot of people all the time. It's a lot of taxis all the time kids, grown folks, everybody is just chill. It's like a version of American culture. And then it's translated into Spanish. Say what? Was these Yeezys? These? Huh? I, I don't I don't speak, I don't know your, what you're saying. You wanna clean my shoes? Yes. Uh, I don't need my shoes clean, but here, I'll give you some money. Yep. Hustlers. These uh <laughs> these American kids they don't know nothing about this. They don't know nothing, nothing about hustling. I'm good bro. You want me to hook you up too? You said you're gonna get yours too? <laughs> Here man. Alright, have a good one. And now I see why kids from other countries come in and they eat American people's lunch because y'all grow up in Thailand. I was just trying to order a pizza from Pizza Hut and he spoke no English, right? And so we had the point and all of that. It was actually kind of cool because it kind of puts me at a disadvantage, which I like, right? Because then you can get uncomfortable and you can do something that actually uh, adds value or it brings more, more of a challenge into your life. I see why a lot of these kids in America is getting washed. They get absolutely destroyed, bro, because it's a different culture over here, right? So when you come up in this space where the kids is hustling, where the people trying to figure out, where they bilingual, they got to learn multiple different languages, they got to thrive a little bit differently, you got a different edge. And then when you come over or you go back home or you come over to America, you look at everybody as soft. Bro, everybody is begging. The overwhelming majority of the people that I see over here is color. You know what I'm saying? Brown, black people, whatever, however y'all want to label them. And they grinding and they hustling and they got good customer service and they working. And everybody you see on the street is trying to make some money or whatever. And then you come over to America and they, everybody is lazy and they asking for vacation times and stuff like that. It's a whole nother ball game over here, big dog. It's a whole nother ball game. My uh, objective today is to get breakfast. Uh, Leslie is heading over to train with 
her team so that she can get ready for what's coming up this upcoming week. And then uh, I plan on working out, getting some work done on my computer, and then going out and exploring and seeing what the culture is. So uh, I'm gonna be here for a while. I'm gonna be over in this country for a little bit. So it's an opportunity for me to learn as much as I possibly can. But I'm also uh, very inspired to learn Spanish, right? Uh, not just Spanish, but just as many languages as I can. So I've added that as a part of my calendar to study on a regular basis, at least one or two hours a day, depending on what day of the week it is, uh, at least one or two hours a day, uh, learning or continuing to learn a new language. Uh, I know two languages already, but I do not know Spanish. I do not know French. I do not know Japanese. And so those are the languages that I'm going to dedicate myself to. So my daughter has recently gotten her gear and so i've decided to go ahead and be a uh, taekwondo master my name is master time dog i can get low i can get lower now if something break oh. something break what <laughs> so we decided to check out of the hotel after one day uh, simply because, well, let me break it down like this. Leslie's friends arrived, and then once Leslie's friends arrived, she was like, y'all, I want to go hang out with them. I want to stay at their Airbnb and everything like that. So uh, one of the reasons why we were staying at this hotel specifically, it's a very nice hotel. I mean, it's a standard American-style hotel or whatever, right? But one of the reasons why we were there or why we were here is because... We wanted to make sure that we was at one of the team approved hotels, meaning that one of the hotels that was close to the venue with the team. Interestingly enough, uh, it's close enough to walk, so a lot of people didn't have a car, which made sense as to why people were um, wanting to stay at one of the team approved hotels. I decided to stay at the Marriott, um, you know, so on and so forth. But anyway, so as my daughter decided that she wanted to hang out with her friends, I said, well, Rita, it's time to go and get somewhere that got a jacuzzi, condo, got a view of the, you know, the sea and everything like that. And then we're going to go and have a good time. So as my daughter go runs and I'm about to go drop her friends off, her and her friends off at their Airbnb, uh, we're going to go and check into our, our Airbnb. Rita's checking out of the hotel and um, got to be able to pivot. It's all about options, to be honest with you. That's really what it is. It's just about having options and then you can go and do whatever it is that you want to do when you want to do it. All right, let me give you guys a new tour of the Airbnb. I haven't even uh, explored it myself, so I don't even know. Oh, all right. So you got a washer and dryer. Rita, you got a washer and dryer in here. She's so funny. And I'm assuming that this is something that they lock that has cleaning supplies in it or something like that. I don't know, but it doesn't open, so I'm not going to force it. Uh, double bolted front door. You got the fridge, uh, stove, cabinetry, table in which I'll probably be doing the majority of my work at. Uh, it has an upstairs. We are on the Top floor, they call it the penthouse, so it's the 20th floor. Do they just call all top floors penthouses? TVs. Um, you got a balcony down here. Small balcony down here, which is cool. So, overlooks the city, but we'll get to that in a minute. And this is the Leslie's bedroom. So, you can see her luggage right there when she decides to come home. And a couple different windows, a shower in here, um, and a mirror to watch yourself shower. So on a small toilet. A lot of these restrooms are a lot of sm a lot smaller than American, but it's really nice. And you got a hair dryer. Woo! Again, you got the closet in here, and we're coming out of the first bedroom. Cool, great place. Let me go ahead and turn that off. Maybe I should turn this off too. All righty then, lots. And again, you got the living room. 
Man, a full view of the kitchen. Upstairs, shall we? So as we go upstairs, apparently people like looking at themselves. Anton from AntonDaniels.com. And then you have another balcony in which you can enter it in from here. Or you can enter from here in which they have the jacuzzi there. But, see if I can open this up. Uh, it is raining right now, so we don't have to worry about jacuzzis. But you have a little bit of a vibe out here, right? And so you got the jacuzzi, you overlook the city out there. Maybe I'll give you guys a little bit more of a tour. Uh, in the daytime, but you got a second bedroom right here. Obviously, again, got the jacuzzi, nice lights. And Rita's in the closet over there. So, got another bathroom with the sink and another mirror with cubby space. It's a lot larger, a little bit more accommodating. Paid a little bit more money for it. But Rita's unpacking. And I think we're gonna go and get something to eat. I think I'm about to go in uh, tomorrow. I'm gonna send Rita. There you go. Tomorrow I'm gonna send Rita to the bank to get some bank notes. Actually, I'm pretty fine the way that it is, but I've been tipping every everybody as far as like the guy that came get my umbrella you know what i'm saying or he brought the umbrella in order for me to come over to the restaurant and all of that like they they really service oriented but i tipped them in and u.s american dollars i think the finesse is real on tourists but we're gonna talk about that tomorrow morning also just chilling over there in the hot tub yesterday overlooking the city at night and it was a vibe it was absolutely a vibe and so right now i'm actually working see my computer right there I'm actually working I'm um, having a good time that's the city it looks gorgeous and then the water is over that way I don't know if you can see it it's another hot tub over there or whatever um, but yeah we were sitting in the hot tub last night having a good time vibing I didn't even realize how close we were to the water and that you can literally see the ocean over that way. And that's pretty cool. Um, but life is good up here. It's, it's, it's much better up here than it is down there. I think the way to go is to always roll with, I'm not gonna say always, but I had to feel more secure in the area and things like, like that before I decided to just roll with an Airbnb. But I think that for international travel, uh, it can be a good idea to go with an Airbnb depending on the area. Now, when I go to Japan, uh, I think I'm going to start off in a hotel or I'm probably just going to rock out with a hotel. Um, the one thing that I'm really, really perplexed about over here is the Wi-Fi. I think the Wi-Fi is a travesty and that it's nowhere near as fast as, the, as what it is in America. But then in other parts of the, of the world, it's super fast fiber speed also just like it is in america uh, sometimes faster than it is in america so i got to do some research on that but yeah the the speed here in america and also google translate saved my life boy if google translate is not the best thing to ever happen in the world because uh, it's just like it's a slight difference obviously than going back and forth just in a regular conversation but to be able to easily understand or to easily communicate with somebody because i have that application and which it was actually my daughter's idea to actually rock out with google translate first and then me and my wife wind up adopting it first so shout out to my daughter but google translate is the best thing that ever happened uh since sliced bread if you are an international traveler even if you're in a touristy area because it saved me from being able to communicate more effectively with my airbnb um the, the door guy everybody and it's some people that speak uh english also but the primary language that they have over here is spanish it is spanish so uh that's cool but yeah everything is vibey i'm working outside uh, i got a lot of coaching calls today so throughout the week 
I'm pretty busy. Leslie is over training. Uh, Rita is over with Leslie having a good time. Um, Rita's been running around doing what Rita do, such as going to the grocery store and taking Leslie her stuff. You know what mothers do. Mothers find stuff to get into and they find things to be busy about. So also international travel because I'm an AT&T customer. Uh, you have to get a special package to be able to have conversations uh, and you're paying extra for it. I don't even know how much I'm paying per day, but I'm paying extra for it per day. And it's worth it for me from a business perspective. Uh, otherwise, you'd have to do everything on Wi-Fi, in which the Wi-Fi is pretty sketchy over here. But um, the, the, the Wi-Fi is pretty cool. The speeds are a little bit sketchy. So uh, looking forward to getting out and about, seeing what's happening. I don't really get a lot of a chance to explore in the daytime as much as I normally would, but uh, we'll see what happens. Very interesting mall experience. Did a little bit of shopping over at Louis Vuitton, nothing major. Um, didn't spend a whole lot of money, but I will say that uh, based off of the lady and what she was telling me, buying it over here is about 25% cheaper than buying it back home at Somerset Mall. If you're from Michigan, you're from Detroit, you know what Somerset Mall is. Uh, in addition to that, uh, this is a very dope mall because it's not very large from the outside. So it doesn't have a, a very huge footprint, right? But it's a tall building. Meaning that when you walk in it and you walk around it, um, it's not real wide, right? Like when we go back home and we go to these malls, Mall of America and all of this is really large, it's really wide. And so it takes up a huge footprint and that it's, it's when these malls start to go, you know, downhill or they try to figure out how to repurpose them and things like that. In addition to that, uh, it had like six floors. Like it just kept going up and up and on the fourth floor there was on the fourth floor there was uh the food area first floor was the major major stores the louis vuitton the cartier the rolex store i went in there and checked in rolex to see if they had anything available of course they didn't even in a whole nother country so uh watches are still on order i still have my watch still on order with my authorized ad I was talking to a guy inside of the Louis Vuitton store that was from LA and he was telling me that he got an authorized dealer but he was trying to see if they had anything available yeah. also so That's what's up. That's what's up. yeah so I like it here I really really like it here every day that I'm here I think this is only our second day here yep this is only our second day here we got here on Saturday Flew in on Saturday. It is Monday, the 24th. And I really do, I like it here. Traffic was horrendous though. Dog, that is probably the worst thing here is the traffic and that it's every man for himself. It's a free for all. If you don't have a, a motorbike and you just got a regular car, be prepared. If y'all think New York traffic was bad, they ain't got nothing on Santo, Santo Domingo and the Dominican Republic. Also, uh, I will say that the women seem to be in a lot better shape and in a lot better condition. I don't know if they're eating differently than the women in the United States of America. Seems like this place is really built for tourists. Uh, you got the same American cars, all of the cars in my building. This is a Durango. Uh, I'm driving a Captiva. Uh, I see a Jeep right here they got wranglers lexuses porsches i haven't oh i've seen a lamborghini uh one i've seen one lamborghini but kias volkswagens it's the same cars that we got back home so it's it's the biggest thing i just looked at a lincoln corsair the biggest thing is it's just the language barrier, right? It's the language barrier to traffic. Uh, if you have resources, if you have money, 
you will be able to thrive here. You will do really, really well here. Um, I see a lot of, uh, I wouldn't say passport bros. What do you call a white man? Passport whites? I see a lot of passport whites here. No, they sugar daddies. Ain't no sugar daddies. The black guys are sugar daddies too. They paying for the box just like the white guys. These white guys be falling in love though. They be in love. They be holding hands, walking down the street, whispering sweet nothings in each other's ears. White guys is, is, is smitten, enamored. A lot of the black guys, it seem like they just, they there for the moment. I have seen some uh, BBLs. So apparently BBLs are just a part of the culture here. But yeah, man, it's, 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 they say it's what four million people here mm -hmm. it feels like it it feels like it's four million people here and it is it's a free-for-all another thing that i will say though is that animals i haven't seen a lot of puppies haven't seen a lot of cats doesn't seem like people are as uh smitten with animals as they are in other countries or in the united states of america and for me, that's a good thing because I don't value animals the same way that they do in the United States of America. Yep, I said it. I don't value them the same way that they do in the United States of America. So, a lot of security in the buildings where it looks as though people have resources to be able to do what they want to do. A lot of motorbikes. Be careful, look up. Uh, that's the vehicle that I'm driving right there. So, a different it's a different culture but i'm really really enjoying the culture would i come back so far off after being here only for the second day absolutely i will absolutely i will this pizza is incredibly good i'm not even sure that i'm gonna go into the jacuzzi tonight I might just take a shower and then just get in the bed. This will give you that itis. It's a bunch of uh, nightclubs, day bars, restaurants, spots, like this one right here behind me. It's just a little restaurant for you to tap in, have a good time, and get your get your eat on or whatever. Went to a little pizza spot, pizza spot. It was cool, it was dope. And uh, the food was really, really good. Like I've never had corn on my pizza, but it was pretty awesome. Uh, it was some girls in there. They kept standing up. I don't know what was going on. Rita says she thinks she got a BBL. I'm not able to tell the difference that effectively, so I don't really know. But she kept standing up in order to show me Brita said she was showing me. I didn't see it. I just thought she was standing up because she really liked the way that her body looked or whatever. But, you know, that's kind of par for the course here. Sorry about all the lights and the camera or whatever. But I just pulled this out in order to get my thoughts off in real time. It seemed like everything is going off all at the same time. This place, uh, never really never really sleeps so i don't know it's an interesting dynamic people are always open and available to work it's a lot going on so walk through tired of driving in the car wanted to walk through and see what was happening uh it's been a very interesting day it is over there naked they are tired it's tired a lot of girls do that around here. They show off their body. They're very, very open with it. And they really friendly and they approach you and they'll have conversations. In addition to that, they had a lot of like little night spots where you can watch the game, chill out. Um, wasn't a whole lot going on because it's a Monday. It's still hard to believe it's only Monday and I've only been here two days. But yep, it was a Monday. And uh, actually I've been here Saturday to Sunday, Sunday to Monday. So officially two days, uh, even though I've been documented for about three days uh, because we landed on Saturday. And so 
Uh, we spent late Saturday, Sunday, Monday here. Uh, but it was a vibe, so we walked around, had a good time. The pizza was incredible. Um, got all, a lot of my work done today, because you know we don't miss. It's really weird being disconnected from corporate America, especially since uh, because of my VPN privileges and security, I can't log into uh, my regular work computer in order to be able to do that. So just took a week vacation. Uh, I don't usually do it because I'm always connected. When you're working from home, there's no reason to really do that. Uh, but I took a week vacation in order to be able to spend with my daughter. Um, I'm going to primarily be using the vacations in order to uh, do anything overseas. Uh, I think I'm going to be heading somewhere else for Memorial Day weekend. I'm not sure yet. Probably somewhere in Canada. Um, some countries that I'm not looking to visit at all. So it just is what it is. I'm not that adventurous. Uh, I got the city behind me. So it's a vibe. I do plan on spending every single night and possibly some mornings inside of the jacuzzi to just rejuvenate. Went and worked out at the gym today. Uh, plus I did some calisthenics. And uh, what more can you ask for? There's buildings all around us that uh, are mostly around the same height as this one. Uh, and so what I like to do when I get out of the jacuzzi is take my swim trunks off, I give them a full frontal, and hopefully one day, if everything goes bad in my life and I lose all of my real estate and everybody cancel me and everything just goes absolutely uh, horrendous, I'll be able to start an OnlyFans, right? But <laughs> I do, I really do. Like I go full nude, uh, give give the, the potential onlookers the frontal, I know, too much information. But I'm sharing with you guys my real life, and so I gotta give you the game on what really happens on a regular basis. So the gym is actually on the sixth floor, but it's marked AS. I'm not really sure what that means, but uh, we're on the 20th floor, which is literally the top floor. Um, and then the gym, the pool, everything is on the sixth floor. So let me give you all a small tour since I've been relegated to the place today. So this right here is obviously a massage table and you have a shower over there. So you can come down here and get your masseuse on. It smells very, very great in here and it's the whole aromatherapy smell. Uh, over here, just to the left of it, is a steam room slash sauna. So after you get your workout on or you're feeling in some type of way, you can come in here and get your steam on. So that's uh the controls for the steam room and the sauna out this way you have a calm and chill relaxing area and if you go slightly over into the right uh, we have the pool area and it's a vibe out here you see a young lady over there uh, having a good time right but this is the pool area and it's pretty cool i think that it's an awesome dope pool to survive and it's really, really nice out here. This is the barbecue pit where you can actually grill some food. And this is where you can use the sink. You got some more seating over here. You got some roundabout uh, walking space for you to walk outside and have a good time. And you have views of the city and the things around you and that you can walk around the entire facility. So uh, this is where you would spend your time if you're actually looking to have a good time with friends and family or you just want to impress a nice little shorty a little baddie you want to bring her around you and then obviously we have the gym in which he's turning off the lights and stuff right there but i don't know if you guys can see that they got security here all the time but they got a gym facility he actually turned on the lights for me to be able to record it thank you my friend gracias in which, you know, they got the treadmills, they got the elliptical, they got the uh, ability for you to lift. Over here is very, very much similar to over there in which you also have another grill for you to be able to have your vibes going on. We got the views of the city out here. Shout out to the city. 
I was all about to say Rio de Janeiro. I don't know. But obviously, we're all the way up there. Another view of the pool. They got different people that work around the clock of the facility. But there is no closing time. The only closing time is when you decide that you no longer want to entertain friends and family out here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So as we walk around uh, again, uh, and then you have different entry points for you to be able to come out here. As we walk around, I think the conversation that we should be having is what is this life like, right? I do a lot of traveling. Now that I'm bringing you guys along for the journey for you to see exactly what my life is like on a regular basis. And again, this is like a track, right? So you literally are, you can walk, you can jog. You got the wood right here. You got the, the red right here. So this is an opportunity for you to actually be able to walk, jog, uh, hit the track. You got other residents obviously around you. Uh, you got a 360 view of the city. You also have a facility. It looks like there's a facility for you to entertain. It's got a bar in there and stuff like that. This is really nice. I guess if I was to live here, then this would be what I would use or where I would stay uh, because this looks like an ideal place for you to stay at. Now it's very, very much gated. Let me give you the, the, the view of the other side that's, I know you guys can't really see me right now, uh, but let me give you a view of the other side opposite of the pool. But you got the bench area over here and you got this little oasis-like area over there. This zen-like oasis, obviously, you can see the entrance into the facility right there. It's like a zen-like oasis right here. If I can get back upstairs and show you what's going on, uh, they got a, like, like a lot of like storm windows for, I'm assuming if, you know, there's problems or trouble or if it's a hurricane, and which one of the biggest things or the biggest questions that I have for places like this is how do they deal with the possibility of climate change? I know a lot of y'all don't believe in climate change, regardless of whether you believe in climate change or not. The reality is that sea levels are rising, the oceans are rising, uh, polar ice caps are melting, the earth is getting warmer, and some of these cities that you know and love today that we're enjoying and documenting today will just be but a memory because they will no longer exist, right? And so even when I'm looking at real estate, I look at things from a business perspective, not necessarily for me because you know I'm gonna make money before it really, really impacts what it is that I got going on. I'll be an old man and having a good time and probably out of my mind and walking around naked flashing people similar to how I flash people when I get out of the jacuzzi. But, you know, I think about my daughter and I think about the possibility of my daughter's kids um, if she decides to have any. I used, I watched this movie. Oh, hey, how you doing? <laughs> I watched this movie called uh, Interstellar, right? She's just sitting there looking at me. I watched this movie called Interstellar and I like those type of movies. And when I watch those type of movies, it kind of gives me a view of what life would be like under certain circumstances uh, at the end of the end of the road for a lot of people. Right. Because humans are largely like a bacteria. It's my goal as an individual is to leave this earth at, in a better space had I not been here. And so I can do my little little due diligence or I can do what it is that I do. Oh, by the way, we only drink in bottled water here. We're not drinking anything but bottled water. Uh, I've been warned by a lot of my bag chasers and my friends. So my goal, obviously, is to do my little part, but uh, on a grand scale, on a human level, uh, even when we're just talking about morally, I don't think that people really care about the well-being of other people. It's sad, but it's a reality. The traffic here, especially during the day, as you can see, during the week, is absolutely horrendous. I've sat in it. Uh, my wife and my daughter have sat in it. You can see the Ferraris and stuff and the Subarus over here. But yeah, it's very much a modern place. I remember when uh, 
when we first uh, got here, my daughter was asking me whether or not it was a third world country. And I said, no, it's not a third world country, but I didn't know what to tell her as far as what you define uh, something that's above a third world country or a developed nation or what. I didn't know what the term was because I was largely unfamiliar uh, with how it is that you label such things, but it's very much modern. See, I got the Louis Vuitton shades on. I know y'all seen me in Louis Vuitton inside of the Blue Mall the other day. And uh, stuff was about 25% cheaper according to the exchange rate based off of certain rules and things that was happening in society. I know y'all can see all of the traffic behind me and things like that. Uh, and I paid about, I believe, I don't remember, 600 bucks or something like that for these shades but yeah man it's 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 interesting but i've been cooped up inside of the house basically i just been working the entire time i just been working i just been obsessed with being productive and grinding and hustling and working and all of that type of stuff so that's what i've been doing and in the midst, I've got a lot done. I've made a lot of money as a result of it. Uh, and we've been grinding, we've been cooking. A lot of y'all been tapping into the live stream, so I appreciate y'all. Um, and we've been, we've been hustling. So for the last couple days, I've been getting it. Thankfully, I had a jacuzzi. You can see the beautiful scenery behind me. It's absolutely gorgeous. That's what we've been doing. We've been working, ladies and gentlemen. I'm gonna introduce y'all to some of my people down here in Santo Domingo. What's going on? What's going on, man? LaRue. LaRue? California, yeah. LaRue from California. Yeah, from Wind area. Yeah, I didn't expect to... Uh... Well, you're the second person that noticed me here. Is that right? Yeah, Is you're the right? second person that noticed me here. It's pretty cool. Yeah, man. What you doing here? What, what am I doing? He said, Anton, what you doing here? <laughs> What, what, I, I was out in Punta Cana and I'm just passing through. How far is Punta Cana from here? That's about a two and a half hour drive. Oh, that's not that bad. Yeah, yeah, but it's all. It's you gonna sit in traffic for a half hour here? Man, this is crazy down here. It's, it's crazy. Like New York or something. It is. walking back um, I was just paying attention to everything that was going on around me there's such a hustle culture around here uh, that I think is rubbing off on me it's almost like I kind of feel like this is home you know what I'm saying I almost feel like I'm in a better space being around different cultures in which I can see that they got a work ethic that's much different than the people that I see back in America right and obviously, I'm not talking about everybody, but I'm um, walking down the street. It's a lot of traffic. It's a lot of people everywhere. Even the women, right? I seen the women getting on top of the motorbikes and they was waiting in line, which is really, really weird because when I first came here, I was thinking to myself, why is everybody getting on motorbikes? You know what I'm saying? Why is everybody on the back of these stupid motorbikes? But then that's a version of Uber and a way in which they're more effectively getting around is by jumping on these motorbikes, right? And people are focused and they're grinding and they're hungry. Uh, I'm seeing different Ferraris or I've seen a, a Ferrari in a lot or whatever. And then the first thing that come to my mind is, well, 
why like i'm wondering if i could buy something like that and then have it shipped over back to the united states or what the cost with that would be you know what i'm saying so um it is it's a different mentality it's a different culture uh, i love it i was on the phone with q today um i talk to q pretty regularly but i was on the phone with q today and she said anton i hope that you q was obsessed with forcing me to take vacations she said anton i hope that you uh was taken off of work as a result of being in the dominican republic she don't really know and i would never tell her because then she would be feeling some type of way she don't really know that i had been locked i had literally locked for like two days myself inside of my airbnb only time i would ever come out is when i went down to the pool when i went down to the gym uh and when i jumped in the jacuzzi or whatever but i had been basically locked in here for two days just grinding and hustling uh, i had some big deals that we secured we had some contracts that we working on um, we also, I was talking to one of my business partners uh, in a media company that we got going on. And so we got some different stuff that's popping off in Detroit and stuff like that. So it's absolutely awesome. There's some great things that's happening and I'm, and I'm very excited uh, for some stuff that I'm going to be announcing on the platform and stuff like that much later. But I think it's something wrong with me. Like genuinely, I think it's something wrong with me. Like I, hung, I have a hunger and a thirst for conquering and more and continuing to push and become greater um, and elevate. And now I'm starting to work harder on me. I'm starting to work on developing myself. Um, I've recently started taking classes when it comes to learning Spanish, Espanol. And uh, we in a gym every day and we in a gym more and we don't continue to push. And my favorite thing to do is to work, self-improvement, growth, run that checkup, become more successful, all of those type of things. And so I have no desire to just do regular people stuff. I have no desire to just be normal. I have no desire to just retire and not work and not grind and not hustle. Uh, my every waking moment is focused on doing the things that's the most valuable for me, which ultimately extends into the people that surround me and work for me, um, my daughter and everything like that. And so uh, I do. I just want to conquer. I just want to work. I just want to grow. I just want to hustle. I just want to grind. Um, even to the point to where it'll be days to where I could just lock myself away uh, in a different country because we've been here. We've been here for like seven days or something like that. And so the other five days I can get out. I can hustle. I can grind. But if it's raining outside uh, and I don't have no reason to head out, what do I care about whether or not I go outside or not? I'm focused on grinding and hustling, so I just got this dog mentality that's in me, right? It's like, yeah, when it's time to go out, you party hard, but when you're here, you focus and you work relentlessly and you continue to push and you grind and hustle. And so that's just kind of like my mentality. Um, and one of the reasons why I like understanding other people and other cultures, because then I can take those lessons and I can apply it to what it is that I got going on here. This can't be right. No way. You feeling on our booty? Is this what happened at the gas stations over here in the Dominican Republic? Oh, Jesus. You got the Benz truck. This is wild stuff, boy. Go ahead and get in that car. I did not, not expect this coming up to the gas station. Guess you get enough money, you can get what you want out here in these streets. Wowzers. Man, it's all in. Hold on, what we got going on here? Hey, don't go nowhere, Poppy. Come here, boy. They about to finesse this dude. It's a very interesting dynamic. So I'm coming to here to get some gas before we go over to um, the airport in the morning, which I don't even plan on sleeping tonight. Everybody actually services you. You pay at the gas pump. I go in, I get some 
some snacks and stuff like that in order to get me to ride. Of course, we know the finesse is happening back there. Uh, tipping is very much appreciated. Everybody is just like, they really got good energy. It's a vibe. Um, you know, it's all Spanish. It's all Spanish, but uh, I tip really big over here. Uh, compared to what it is that, you know, tipping is. I, I see this Mustang, it's say like 3.7 on the side of it instead of 5.0. That's interesting. Gracias. And uh, like, if you look at the gas pumps, they don't have a thing right here. You know what I'm saying? So you pay for the person that actually pumps your gas, they fill it up. Of course, they're gonna suggest premium. Uh, and it's funny because I've seen people with that shirt on, but you, I'm used to uh, people work in the gas station, obviously in the United States of America, because they don't have that same, they don't have that same service uh, thing where they literally have a guy waiting at every station, waiting to service you. So it's pretty interesting. I wonder how they get paid. I don't know if they just get paid from the gas station itself or they do it in order to make tips. Um, but I gave them $20, 20 American dollars. So I do all of my tipping in American dollars. And then, uh, I know Rita had went and got like some, some money and whatever their currency is, whatever that is. And then we go from there. So I got a full tank, drop it off at the rental car place, which is supposed to be 24 hours. I see my man still getting finessed over here with the bins open. Uh, and it's also inside of the place. It's like a restaurant slash gas station. Let me show it to you really quick. It's like 2.30 in the morning. I haven't been asleep yet. I've just been taking care of business and getting a lot of work done. And which I am really, really ahead of uh, schedule. But we are about to head over into the airport so we can get back into the Americas. This airport literally doesn't close. It's a line of people just waiting for people to come out of the airport that arrive here. I don't know who they're waiting for. They're waiting for their people, all kind of different stuff. But the airport stays open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Which is much different than what it is that we have in the United States of America or specifically DTW. And that the airport closed at a, at a certain time and it opens back up at a certain time. And uh, this place is just busy, man. It's super busy. They got a halfway decent lounge in here. It's called the Sala Caribe, right there. Um, and then they got another part over right here. It's called the Sky Lounge. This lounge is significantly better than the rest of them. Uh, but I am absolutely delirious. Absolutely delirious. I mean, I really reserved uh, how it was that I was moving for when I got on the plane. I'm about to go over here and just check out and just walk around because I'm, we supposed to board in like 25 minutes or something like that. So I didn't want to um, kind of fall asleep or doze off until I got on the plane. But then when I get on a plane, I really don't want to miss breakfast because it's one of the reasons why you get first class. And then the meal I selected, because you can pre-select your meals on Delta now, uh, the meal I, select, I selected, quiche. Quiche is one of my favorites. So another interesting thing about this is uh, even inside of the lounge, they got a separate area for smoking. Obviously, that's not the lounge. But they got separate areas for smoking and stuff like that. And it's not necessarily just um cigars and stuff when i was walking through after we got through security and there was a whole lot of security um they were selling like cartons of cigarettes and stuff just seemed so old school and outdated you know what i'm saying but uh after we get on a plane or after we get off the plane because instead of flying to, into atlanta we got to fly into jfk and then you move over from jfk straight to detroit so should be a pretty smooth flight but uh, after I land and I get myself situated I want to give you guys some of my final thoughts uh, about what it is that I feel about this trip and some news 
uh, that comes along with what my transition is going to be not only on YouTube as an online content creator, uh, but across other platforms and some changes that I'm making. I don't remember being this sleepy. Um, the last time that I did an all-nighter. But I slept for like 30 minutes, so I knocked the edge off. Uh, but I got it. I got a Buenos flight over to New York. York. How long is this flight, Rita? How long is this flight? I got a four hour flight. The thing that takes the longest is really just going through everything related to customs. Um, now we waiting for Uh, we, we was waiting for all of the Emirates people to go through, but. So I'm looking at some of the modifications uh, here at JFK. Is this new? Is this all that is new? Yeah, this is gorgeous. They got the big wide screens instead of the individual TVs. It's pretty sick. So they redoing JFK. And as you come up, you can actually see the different signs that's basically saying, yo, a new JFK is coming and it's not like the 1990s, right? You, see, you still see a lot of construction and stuff like that, but you can see a lot of the modifications. Don't worry, nobody trying to get you, baby girl. <laughs> you can see a lot of the changes and the modifications of how things are laid out for you to be able to go through and more easily navigate through the airport experience. It's pretty awesome. Why some of the most dusty people think that you be hoping not to get caught up in the camera? It's like, ain't nobody thinking about recording you, girl? It'd be the biggest, most dusty people. Listen, just keep walking like normal. We recording the airport. We not recording you. It'd be the dustiest of the dusty. Be like, oh, don't record me. Like, ain't nobody even thinking about you. And then if you hadn't brought any visibility to yourself, then we wouldn't even have known that you did not want to be recorded. You know what I'm saying? Like, people is wild to me. I've never actually flew into JFK. Anytime I've come to New York, I've always flew into Newark or New flew into New Jersey. I guess not Newark. Maybe Newark, I don't know, I don't remember, but we always fly into New Jersey. Um, and it's look like a mall in here. So, I'm gonna go and check out a new club that I've never been to with the Priority Pass that comes along with the uh, Chase Sapphire Reserve. And we gonna check it out, see what the vibes is, maybe pick up a couple, a little bit, of, little bit to eat. You know, most of the clubs, they just be having refreshments. They don't be having, like, real food food. Uh, so I might go pick up something to eat and then check out the club, see what the vibes are. So I kind of want to wrap this up, um, put a bow tie on it, and uh, catch my flight over into Detroit. Actually, my flight got delayed by, like, an hour. So instead of taking off at, like, 12-something, it's, like, 1-something. Um, so just getting some work done here over here on my computer. I don't know if you guys can see that, but getting some work done on my computer. Uh, Leslie and Rita is out going to get something to eat. Um, and everything is awesome. So, Dominican Republic was awesome. Uh, spent the entire week in the Dominican Republic. Uh, and then it's ironic because I'm right here back with you guys about to head back to Metro Detroit. Um, and then next week, uh, you will see we will be over in Dallas. And so the thing about it is that we spend the majority of our time in the air once the weather starts to change. Uh, we change the weather a little bit, but not a whole lot during the winter time because uh, we got a daughter. And next year it'll probably be a little bit different because my daughter will be driving, but that does not mean that she's grown. So we will still be spending a lot of time uh, monitoring, monitoring her, uh, spending, you know, just making sure that we add as much value as we can to her. Uh, and being a part of her life. She won gold uh, in the Dominican Republic. Man, I, I feel like I should have her medal. I don't know, I gotta find her medal. Hopefully if she comes back, 
uh, before I, I get done recording this video, I can show y'all her gold medal that she won over in Santo Domingo. Uh, I'm glad I stayed in Santo Domingo because it got a it got a gave me an opportunity to see what was going on culturally there. Um, instead of staying over in some resort in Punta Cana or something like that, uh, ran into two people while I was in the Dominican Republic. Uh, and had some conversations with them that recognized me. So that was absolutely awesome. One of them was actually from Los Angeles. So shout out to you. Um, and then in addition to that, uh, I locked myself inside of uh, the condo that I was staying in that just so happened to have a jacuzzi. So that was a little bit better, uh, but worked out, locked myself in a condo and got a lot of work done while I was there. So, you know, that was great. You know, starting to do a little bit more international travel. Uh, I'm not sure where I'm going to go in May, but I think I'm going to go out the country again in May, and you know we're going out the country in August because we're going to be in Tokyo, um, and lots going on, so looking to have a lot more experiences with regard to that, and um, I guess the biggest thing is just to, just to cap it off really quickly, um, decided to move in a different direction personally when it comes to uh, the Lapeef Network. You guys already know that I had started distancing myself from panels, not because I don't like panels. I absolutely love panels, and that doesn't mean that I'm not going to pop up on panels, specifically my own panel. Uh, but I just think that, like everything, if you followed my journey, uh, especially on this channel in particular, and you can look at all of my older videos, uh, I've traversed through so many different things. Like right now, we're doing a lot of interviews in which that's now navigating over into my other channel, Don't Do Coke in the Bathroom. Make sure you subscribe to that. Um, we got a lot of webinars that's happening on the Patreon, so we're doing a lot of meetups. Uh, at one point, I was uh, really immersed in a culture of Detroit, and then you see me go over into urban exploration. Then it was bike life, and then you start seeing some of my cars, and I start immersing y'all inside of corporate America. Um, live streaming. It's just continued growth. So much growth where I'm starting to get these gray hairs coming in so as soon as I get back to the crib I'm gonna get those taken care of because I broke my my edger when I was over in the Dominican Republic so I'm not gonna worry too much about that um, but I got a lot of new stuff for y'all um, one thing that I want to emphasize is that um, it wasn't on like no beef or anything like that but it's just continued growth and evolution and so I, I look at everything from a business perspective and um, when I'm looking at opportunities for growth, I make the adjustment in the same way that you would make an adjustment if you was leaving a job um, and going to a different position. So um, did some phenomenal things over there, made history. Uh, when we first started getting into it, I thought that it, or we thought, we didn't know what it was. The sentiment, honestly, was that <laughs> one day it'll all come together and be a lifetime movie or a where are they now? type of situation and that's exactly what it turned out to be you got to be careful with your words um, because you can make things come to fruition that you didn't realize your words have power and people don't really realize that um, but it's not a bad thing it's a good thing I think that evolution and growth is always good uh, I think that the network is on solid footing and so you know they're gonna do what they do uh, over there as far as continuing to have people and uh, everything like that but um, I got bigger things that I, I'm gonna announce coming within the next month or so as soon as we get some ink on paper uh we're gonna be moving into new platforms new content new days of the week in which we're doing things new partnerships new agreements it's gonna be new everything and so uh, all good things moving forward i'm excited for for the journey ahead uh and i'm excited for all of the good energy that come along with it hopefully you guys are continuing to enjoy the journey uh, one thing is for sure and two things is for certain is that it'll never be boring because it's always ever evolving and you never know what you're going to get on a day to day, let alone a week to week basis. Um, and this is even fun. This is my third week with this long form journaling type of content. And uh, you just never know. You don't know what's going to happen on the day to day on a day to day basis. So, as usual, I love you. I appreciate you. Make sure you subscribe to the Patreon. We got a, uh, a webinar that's coming up this Tuesday. Uh, link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. And that webinar going to be lit. I promise you. Then we got the Patreon meetup in Dallas. And then I'm going to be announcing the next city that we're going to. 
Uh, and then yesterday I dropped an exclusive interview, uh, long form content for you guys to be able to check out. So I love you. I appreciate you guys. You have been awesome. Um, and I'm looking forward to you guys coming on a journey with me. See y'all next week. Peace.